Well, thank you, Rachel, for uh, starting today's webinar. Uh, as we do always, we're just going to uh, uh, wait until we have all of our um, registered participants joining into today's webinar. And once we see the ticker, the counter there uh, rising up to the uh, expected number, then we'll, we'll formally get started with today's presentation. So welcome to 2021. Uh, this being the first webinar for 2021 after we did 20 webinars in 2020. Uh, all of those webinars are now up on our YouTube channel, on Multi Hold Solutions YouTube channel, and can be viewed at your leisure. Uh, and what a way to start the year. We've decided this year to start with a walkthrough of the Fontaine Bajot Allegria 67, which of course is the the largest yacht or catamaran in the Fontaine Bajo stable. And uh, it's so exciting that we're able to cross to our colleagues in Phuket in Thailand today. Uh, behind the camera, we have Charlie. In front of the camera there on the screen is Andrew De Bruin. And also uh, assisting today is, is Paul. Are you there, Paul? Paul Stamp. So uh, Paul will be uh, also in, in view today. Uh, Paul is our Asian sales manager and uh, is obviously very quickly becoming a specialist in Fontaine Bajot. And he's very fortunate because he has the Allegri 67 just down from his office, which is a, a, a great um, representation of the Fontaine Bajot product. Uh, I'm here in Australia today. In the background helping is uh, Rachel. And what we're going to do is just flip through a couple, couple of slides first before we cross over to uh, the team in Thailand. And just before we do that, a big thank you to the owner of this Allegri 67. It's a privately owned yacht uh, in Thailand and it's very generous of the owner to allow us access to the yacht and to allow us to do this video walkthrough. The next webinars in uh, two weeks time on the 25th of February at 2 p.m we'll be doing a live walkthrough of the MY40 power catamaran. Uh, we now have two MY40s here in Australia, which is uh, fantastic. And there is uh, more to come. And while we're talking about the MY40 power catamaran, we actually need to change that because the MY range recently, if you haven't already seen it, has been given new branding. And we now have the MY4.S, which is a, uh, a non flybridge version of the uh, 37 foot power catamaran. We then have the MY5, which is the, the uh, naming that, that will replace the MY40. And then we have the MY6. So if you're uh, wanting to find more information on that, just visit the multi Hole Solutions website and you can see all the pictures of the uh, newly released and newly announced models. And then on the 25th of March, so a month after the, uh, the webinar on the on the power catamaran, we're going to be going back to our friends at Yacht Share Mediterranean, uh, Trevor Joyce and his family. Uh, we did a fantastic webinar last year on the uh, Eastern Aegean, uh, the islands of Greece and Turkey off the coast of Marmaris and Bodrum. Uh, in one month's time, we'll be doing the same thing, but we're going to be going east uh, along the coast from uh, Marmaris across uh, along the Lycian coast. So they're fantastic webinars, especially while we've all been locked down and not allowed to travel. It's fantastic to be able to at least uh, go, go into the webinar for an hour and uh, put ourselves back in to some of the most beautiful parts of the Mediterranean. We're also looking for uh, inspiration. If you have any ideas on uh, what we should be also doing some webinars on over tw through 2021. We, we plan to continue to do them uh, through this year. They, they are very good. Uh, we have, whilst we have a number of people watching them on the day that we're presenting them, we also have lots of people watching them on YouTube. So if you've got an idea, if you think there's something we should be presenting in one of our multi hole Solutions webinars, please uh, drop us an email or, uh, or give us a call and we're happy to uh, to uh, take any uh, recommendations that you have. Okay, as we always do with our webinars, we um, welcome questions. So if you would like to ask any questions today, you've got the Q&A button on uh, your screen. 
you can click in there and you can type a question. And then throughout the webinar, either Rachel or myself will uh, respond to that. And we'll uh, either interrupt Andrew at the time of the question, if it's relevant to the part of the yacht that he's uh, focusing on, or we will hold it over to a QA and a session at the end. Okay, so as I said, my name is Greg Boller. I'm the New York Sales Manager, and uh, we've been presenting these webinars now for over 12 months and assisting, of course, or I should say managing uh, the presentation is Rachel Crook, who has put together this presentation for today. And uh, our key presenter today is Andrew De Bruin, who uh, lives up in Phuket, uh, and he's growing the multi hold Solutions Asia business from the beginning. Uh, and he, along with the team up there, have built a very strong presence for multi hold Solutions in Thailand and Malaysia and Singapore and so on. Uh, so we'll cross to Andrew very shortly. And what I'm gonna do is stop the share which will, uh, and I'll also stop my video, which will bring Andrew into focus. So here I go with that. Uh, and now you are full screen, Andrew. So welcome. And it looks like we've had a, picked a classic day. Okay, well, you timed it perfectly for the throw just as a motorbike went past, Greg. But uh, anyway, <laughs> welcome everybody to, uh, to this webinar on the Allegria 67. Uh, Greg's given you some background. We're here in Phuket looking up to the beautiful Pangnao Bay. Perfect day here for it, um, except it's a bit, bit hot. But uh, anyway, for all you people in uh, in Northern Europe and places like that, it's uh, nice and nice and warm here. So here's the Allegria 67. Um, clearly, I think Greg's already said it's the, you know, the the, um, the top of the, the stable for Pont Um We've sold a couple now into Phuket and they've been very, very successful uh, because of a number of features which we'll show you as we walk around. But uh, anyway, come on board and we'll have a look around. You can see just before we jump on board, uh, you can see the uh, swim platform and the dinghy lift there. So this has got a 4.2 metre tender on it. Uh, platform drops down about 800 mil into the water as well. So it makes the whole launching and, uh, and retrieval of the tender very, very easy. Um, and come and see the, see the cockpit because it's a, it's a super space. Okay, so you can see how big the cockpit is. This is obviously a 67 foot uh, catamaran, so there's quite a bit of space to use. Um, you've got uh, a lot of storage areas here. You've got under all the lockers, of course, you've got storage. You've got uh, nice resting places up on each side of the cockpit, and they are protected from the wind by this uh, acrylic uh, window there. So, it's a really nice spot to, uh, to relax. And in here you have the two aft cabins, which will show you uh, further down the track. They have access from the cockpit here. Uh, again, a lot of storage. We have two fridges on this boat. We have gas locker storage under here. You have the gas plancher here or barbecue. Of course, many of these things are options. And on the Allegria, we can fit pretty much what you're after. So FP have their list of options uh, and we can add and subtract those just to make the boat absolutely perfect for what you want. Engine room access is under the under the uh, cockpit sole here and we'll show you that towards the end of the webinar. This particular one has the uh, electric table fitted in the cockpit. So this table goes up and down electrically. Uh, we can turn it around and open the leaves out as well to make it a huge dining table that would seat 12 people without too much trouble at all. So Andrew, uh, a Andrew, can I ask a couple of questions there? Th those uh, fold up chairs there, are they uh, factory supplied or is that a, an addition? No, these are the owner's chairs. Um, there are uh, 
pile of stools that come with the table in the saloon, which you can bring out here. He likes the folding cheap chairs. Uh, there's no problem with stowing them on the boat. So uh, they've come along from, uh, from the owner. And I also saw on the back of the deck there, there's the, uh, the what looks like an electric sliding shade cloth. Is that a, a factory option or? Uh, yes, we were going to show you that later, but we'll show you that now. Button. So Charlie will show you the sun the sunshade. So that comes all the way down because invariably sometimes you're at anchor with the sun streaming into the cockpit at sunset, and this kind of makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit more comfortable for you. But just so you know, gentlemen, there's obviously someone with a, a, a a need to polish their boat nearby you at the moment and uh, that that polisher noise is quite strong in the background so over this side of the cockpit we have the, uh, the controls for the tender lid which I will so it's as easy as pushing a button That's That's fantastic. Okay, um, that's pretty much it for the cockpit. Uh, lots of fridges, cold storage. There's storage for life rafts under the sole. There's another cold locker here. Uh, lockers aft and here for snorkeling gear and dive equipment. Uh, we've got an ice maker just under the flybridge steps there. A, a lot of uh, a lot of space, and this is an area that people will uh, will love to love to hang around in. One one nice feature of this is that the cockpit tent, which encloses the whole cockpit, you know, during rainy periods and things like that, all zips up underneath the coach roof here, so that it's completely out of the way. It's not like you've got some unsightly roll of canvas all the way around it. It's uh, it, it's completely out of view, and uh, takes five minutes to deploy the whole thing. It's very, very nice. So and Andrew, uh, Andrew is, that, is that two fridges behind you there? Yeah, these are two fridges. I mean, you can have one fridge, you can have two fridges, you can have no fridge, you can have a freezer. We can do whatever you want, but the space is there for, uh, for two 80 litre fridges, yeah. Very good. Um, if there's no, uh, no questions about cockpit, we might, uh, I'll, Head up to the uh, coach uh, to the flybridge, and Charlie will follow me up in a minute. Just while we're here, you can see Paul there standing ready, ready to do our bidding. How are you, Paul? Very well, thank you. You, Greg? Yeah, very good. And listen, um, uh, that those uh, cockpit cushions we're seeing there, they're also an option, aren't they? The way in yep. which they've been pleated on the other side on the sunbed bench. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll jump upstairs. Great camera work, Charlie. So we'll just get Charlie to do a, a slow pan around on the flybridge so you uh, so you're aware of what's here. Um, we've got twin helm stations on this boat, on the Allegria, they all come with twin helm stations. This particular boat has a hard top in it as well. Uh, the hard top is a really nice, uh, sexy looking way of providing a lot of shade up here. Obviously we are in the tropics, so shade is vitally important, but um, there's, uh, you can have a soft top bimini, or you can have nothing at all if you want, but uh, here we find the hard top the best. Uh, while we're out the back here, you can see two monster sun pads out here. You've got the solar panels integrated into the coach roof and the captive traveler system for the boom, which I'll show you the operation of that in a little while. This boat has gone with the flybridge furniture which gives you another fridge and a sink up here on the flybridge. If you wanted to put a grill or a barbecue up here, you can. But as far as the, um, as far as seating areas go, you know, you can have 
10 to 15, 20 people up here and it's, it's not crowded at all. I'm just going to go back through to the helm so we can have a chat here. So with the twin helm station, you've also got twin throttle controls here and here, so you can berth the boat easily from both sides, uh, depending which side your, uh, your dock is at. We've got sound system, we've got lighting controls here, and also we have controls there for the electric furlers. On this boat, we've got the inner, we've got a stay sail and a genoa, both on electric furlers, and they're very, very easily handled here. One thing that springs to mind, that's hits you in the face as soon as you walk up here, are these four big powered winches. So that all of the winches here are electric and every uh, sailing control line on the boat comes back to this one spot. So that it means that if you're chartering a boat or you're sailing the boat with you know limited number of people that know what to do, uh, there's only one area that really is in control. And it makes it quite safe as well because on a boat this size, a lot of your lines have big loads on them. And, uh, you know, if people do things incorrectly, you, you can get hurt. So having it all here under the watchful eye of the skipper is a, a nice, safe way of doing it. Uh, so all the sheets for the head sails and also the Jenica as well, all come back to this area. All right, everything, furling lines, reefing lines, halyards and sheets all come back to here. Now, we've got, uh, on this particular boat, we've got uh, the Garmin Electronics, which is one of the Fontaine Peugeot options. Uh, we've got the big screens on this one. You can have various size chart plotter screens. And if you require something apart from Garmin, we can organize that for you as well. Very, very easy to do. The hard top has uh, windows here, so that you can see the sail trim, and they can also be covered up to stay out of the, stay out of the sun. Um, chain control counter here so that you can control the, uh, the anchoring. It can all be done basically, the whole boat can be run from here. Uh, any, uh, and you'll see the big uh, 2020 displays from the Garmin there, which gives you some nice information uh, as far as sailing and wind. And you can program that to be whatever you want. Um, any, uh, any questions popping up? Uh, no, mate, you've done a really good job of uh, explaining it all there. Um, the electric furlers, I think, are a point that pops up. So you've got the, the furler is electric for both the stay sail and the Genoa there. And I think if you put a Jenica on, you can also, through Fontaine Bajo Services, get that done as an electric furling uh, Jenica as well. Uh, Jenica doesn't come with an electric furler uh, because that's obviously out on bowsprit and gets taken in and out. So. No, I, I, I realise that. I, I realise that, but uh, Fontaine Bajo Services, Yannick, has now uh, got a, a solution to the, have that as an electric a solution as well, which is fantastic. Yep. Okay, sure. So uh, anyway, that's the that's the flybridge. So I'm going to wander down now, and uh, Charlie just have a pan around that foredeck there and in one minute we'll be out there and show you the features out there. Uh, on the way down, Charlie, can you just ask Paul to check his uh, WhatsApp, please? Yeah. The guy doing a bit of polishing, huh? Yeah, we're just uh, asking Paul if he can um, pop over and ask him to stop, buy him a beer. Paul, oh, you asked the polishing guy. Let's check your WhatsApp. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's come through the saloon. And, uh, with this boat, you have two cockpits. So you have a huge aft cockpit, which is normal on any catamaran. But once you get to a boat this size, you also have a very nice forward cockpit. Obviously, any boat that is an ocean going boat uh, needs to be fully waterproof up here. And so Fontaine do a very, very substantial watertight door here. Um, this door opens and closes quite normally, but when you're at sea, 
there are four big latches that latch this in, pull the door in and make it completely watertight. Andrew, can you, can you do, Andrew, can you open and close that again? I get a lot of questions about how heavy and how easy it is, so. I mean, that's, there's a simple latch here, which closes the door. For normal use, that's all you'd use. So you turn that latch and open it. But you've also got these dogs here, which will latch it in. There's one on each corner that makes it fully watertight. Wonderful demonstration. <laughs> So, lovely cockpit. There's obviously a big sun awning for this as well, uh, which is an option that this owner's bought. Uh, makes the place a lovely place to sit. One of the big advantages of a forward cockpit is that when you're underway and you're motoring, uh, you are in an area with no engine noise. Uh, it's not so bad when you're up in the flybridge, of course, but if you've got people sitting in the cockpit and you're underway doing, you know, nine, 10 knots, there's going to be engine noise. So out here, you can't hear a thing. Um, you have more locker space under here, of course. There's an option for a jacuzzi on this side, uh, but this owner didn't want the jacuzzi. And you've got a huge locker here for storage of toys and snorkeling gear and vacuum cleaners and things like that. And Andy, while you're closing that, the teak, you've got a natural teak there. Uh, this is teak, exactly. Um, you, there's all sorts of options on this boat for teak and synthetic teak. Uh, you can have the whole deck covered with teak or synthetic teak. You can just go, this particular owner just wanted the cockpit transoms and forward cockpit, and then up on the flybridge as well. So you can mix and match that as, as you want. Um, anchor systems are all in this centre hatch. Charlie can show you in there. You've got the big bridle comes back to here, along with the anchor. The chain has the chain is all under under this section here, which you can access under this cushion. Uh, but you've got a long drop on the chain, so you should have no snarls or anything in this chain. Now. The Door around if Charlie swings around to the right. This one here gives you access to the owner's cabin. So the, on the Maestro version of this boat, the owner's cabin has uh, access to the forward cockpit and also inside the saloon, which makes it really quite nice. I'll just show you some of the storage up here. We have a huge area this section here, Charlie would just stick the camera in there. Now, these bow compartments can be configured as cabins or storage, or you can make it a laundry, uh, things like, um, you know, washing machines, dryers, freezers, all of those sort of things can be fitted up here as you, as you like. You just have to excuse us for a moment. We've got a, got a, a typical Thai long tail just zooming past. There you go, that's for a bit of local colour for you. <laughs> There's such clear skies today. Decided to put foot. So Andrew, we can't hear you at the moment because the uh, the Thai long tail is uh, taking control of your microphone. We going there, Greg? Can you hear me now? <laughs> uh, just, we can just hear you now. Yeah, the, the long okay. tail the long tail took over. It's uh, it's a definite noisy boat. Those things. Uh, in the port bow section on this boat, the owner has a captain's cabin or a skipper's cabin, crew cabin, whatever. And Charlie will just show you down in there at the moment. Again, you can have this configured as you like, really. That's that's a very large crew cabin in, in comparison to many nice others. Cabin. And uh, 
that's all air conditioned as well. So that, you know you have every every uh, comfort that a that a crew will want up here without a problem. And if Charlie just sort of pans around over the coach roof and everything up there, you can get a good idea of the uh, the layout of the bow and the and how the flybridge and hard top work. So there's also, uh, you can see up there that this has got the canoe boom on it, uh, Greg, uh, which makes the sail handling and the stacking of the main sails that comes down, you know, really, really easy. You've got all the roller, fill, the roller cars, uh, basically you drop the halyard on this and it all packs up into that, uh, that sail stack pack there nicely. And can you pan up a bit higher there, Charlie, up the rig? Sort of straight into the sun from there. There you go. No, that's from, from where we are, that's perfect. So just hold there for a moment. So obviously just under the radar there is the deck light, which comes as a standard option. And that lights up the foredeck when you're uh, wanting to anchor at night and so on. And then you've got the radar. You might see up there, this particular owner has the, uh, the mast lights fitted as well, blue LED lights. Okay. So now we've had the uh, we've had the saloon doors closed. Um, so to try and get a bit of air conditioning happening inside, uh, come on in. We'll have a look at the saloon. Thank you, Paul. I don't know how you did it, but you stopped the polisher. <laughs> okay. So what we have here, you can see the huge expanse of glass that's closed there. That obviously all opens out. So you've got a massive access between the uh, saloon here and the cockpit. Uh, and with the galley up version, as we have here, uh, the galley becomes part of the living area and the social, uh, the social interaction. Um, as I just mentioned, this is a galley up version, what they call a galley up version, which means that the galley is up here on the bridge deck. Okay, there is another version where another different layout where you can have all of the, the fridges and the galley and the cookers and everything down in the port hull, which then makes this one huge big lounge area. Um, there's a few differences. Uh, it's very hard to show you. I think you've got some, uh, some images there, Greg, which you'll be showing yes. people. But the main difference I think is apart from the galley not being here. Uh, so this area is replaced by a big lounge section. Very, very nice. You have your dining area on the starboard side and you have a massive big lounge on the port side here. And then looking forward here, if Charlie just hands around a little, this chaise lounge here, uh, which on this boat has storage under, This area here becomes a small bar, okay? So you have your, your wine coolie, etc., fridges and the sink up here. Uh, it's a nice little bar area, which if this is all just lounging uh, area on the bridge deck, is, is kind of nice really. So what I'll um, do, Andrew, is I'll let you take a break for a minute. I'm just gonna do a share screen and I'm just gonna to explain to those who are watching today the different cabin configurations and show them some pictures of the other sure. option. The aircon so, noise too much for you, Greg, or not? Say that again, mate. The aircon noise too much, or you're right? It's perfect. So I'm just gonna let you have a break for a minute and I'll go on to share screen. Okay. Okay, folks, so just while Andrew has a uh, break from being the center That's of uh, the screen there. Like the crashing along. Just mute, uh, Andrew. So the 67, what we've got here is we have uh, the, the version that the gentlemen are on today is the uh, owner's version, the maestro. And this is the, uh, with the galley up and that's what we're seeing here. So they're about to show us the owner's cabin on the starboard side here. The only thing is that crew cabin is a storage compartment on the boat that Andrew's on today. We've got the guest cabin access from the aft cockpit. And then we've got a, a guest cabin with the double bunks. And then we've got a midships port side guest cabin and a forward uh, guest cabin on the port side. If we click to the next slide, 
we've, we've also got uh, the galley up with the double port. So you can exactly the same as what we just looked at, except you can have the double bed in the aft port. So that gives you one, two, three, four guest suites, plus the owner's cabin or owner's suite. And then you can also have the galley down on the port side, which gives you, as you see there, a galley there, double uh, bunk aft, uh, guest cabin forward on port side and guest cabin aft on starboard side. And then you then can have the charter version, which is all six. So the, the owner's cabin becomes two guest suites. So you actually have six double cabins. And then you can have the galley down charter version, which is four guest suites, uh, galley down and a crew cabin aft with the double bunks. So you can see there is a doorway there between the, uh, the, the galley down and the uh, crew cabin, the crew cabin in the aft port side. So in terms of visualizing what we're just showing you there, Andrew and Paul and Charlie are on board the galley up version. And this picture here shows you the galley down saloon, which is, as Andrew said, you've removed all of the galley and replaced it with a large settee. And then there's the bar up in the front section there. And then if I click to the next slide, you'll see the galley down version uh, is still a very tremendous galley. And unlike a lot of uh, galley down versions, the size of the window in this galley is so large that there is a, a, a huge amount of natural light that floods in. The other very good point that we get is behind that panel there is a full upright double door fridge. Uh, and then this, between this bench top here and that bench top there, uh, if you choose to have the double bunks in the aft port cabin is a doorway through to the crew cabin. So that allows the crew to rise nice and early, slide through the doorway and start preparing meals at the start of the day or vice versa, be able to uh, uh, tidy up at the end of the day and just slide through into their cabin without uh, interrupting the guest spaces if, if not required. So I, th I think these slides are a good example of showing you the Allegri versions and the fact that you can have a galley up or a galley down. So with that, I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to bring Andrew back into uh, into interview. So uh, Andrew, I just need to unmute you. Uh, I just need to unmute you there. There you go. You're, oh, hang on. Sorry. Sorry, Andrew. Okay, we're back to you. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to show you a few of the features of the galley up version, uh, the galley itself. Uh, first off, we have the uh, TV on this particular boat is uh, an electric uh, raised TV. There, won't bring it all the way up, you get the picture. Uh, so from the lounge area, uh, you get a great view of the telly. Um, or it also turns up to the island bench. Now, just coming around this galley here, this particular boat is fitted with uh, a gas hob five burner gas hob and a gas oven, okay? Where you can have uh, induction options, you can have all sorts of things, so no matter what you want. We have a, uh, an extraction hood here. On this side, we have freezer and, uh, sorry, fridge and freezer. Here we have a wine cooler and we've got Quite a bit of storage in this galley as well. A lot of cold storage, obviously, but quite a lot of storage for all the things that you need to put in the galley. Uh, across the back of the hob, good storage there. More cupboards here. We have a convection microwave here, rather large, which is nice. More cupboards under the sink. We have a dishwasher in here. And we have one more fridge here. Now, on top of all of this, we have an upright fridge, which is a standard uh, kitchen type fridge, which is down in that port hull. And I'll show you that later. It's, it's a fridge freezer. Uh, it's nothing particularly exciting, but it's, uh, it gives you so much cold storage space on this boat. Um, 
Then we move around here. This is obviously your lounge area. And this table, again, is electrically operated from the nav station and can be either a coffee table or you can make it into a large dining table, which turns around and it's huge. You can fit you know, eight people in here without a problem. So the, the stools and the, the big, uh, what would you call it? A, I don't know what you call those things these days, but <laughs> are they all, they're all factory standard, yeah? Yeah, these are all standard with this table, yeah. Okay, so these are the stools, which if you don't have those folding uh, teak uh, units out in the cockpit, you can easily take these out there and they work quite well. And there's two more over your left shoulder, right? Oh, they're everywhere. There's, <laughs> there's a load of them. Um, now here we go down, this is the nav area here and in this area obviously the whole boat is pretty much controlled from here. Again we have the Garmin electronics, uh, you can see on this display, I don't know if it's flickering for you, but you can see this boat's got an aft camera so that uh, quite often you know you're mooring a big boat and you can't see everything, uh, quite handy having that camera view up the top. Uh, We've got the Fontaine Bajot uh, panel here, which controls all of your electrics and electronics on the boat. So with that panel, you can monitor solar panels, you can monitor generators, you can monitor water makers, you can monitor nav lighting, all the lighting on the boat can be controlled from here. And all of the deck winches, uh, the windlass, uh, all the electronics, uh, the radios and things like that can all be controlled from that area. You've also got on that panel, which you can relay onto the Garmin system because they talk to each other, you've got all your tank information. So your fuel tanks, which you've got 1200 litres of diesel, your water tanks, 1000 litres of water. Uh, this particular boat's got a grey water tank as well uh, and your black water tank. They're all monitored and you can see the levels on those instruments there. Um, again, you've got, because of the, um, the complexity of the electronics. Um, we've also got an emergency panel here, so you can always turn on nav lights, bilge pumps, water pumps, and things like that, no matter, even if you have a dead boat. Batteries on this boat are under the floor here. So you've got uh, batteries, you've got water tanks and things like that. A lot of the heavy equipment is right under the mast. So that keeps the, all the weight in the boat central as much as possible which is really, really nice on a catamaran for, uh, for reducing pitching. This particular boat has uh, twin Onan gensets, so that you've got uh, 17, kil 17 kilowatt, I think, uh, on either hull. The idea of that with this guy was that he will be doing some charter work as well and wanted to have complete uh, reliability when it comes to air conditioning and water makers and things like that. So. Should he have a failure with one genset, the other one's exactly the same, same rating, and he uh, and can run things no problem at all when you get out. Uh, also, you've got here water maker controls, and of course, the air conditioning for the boat. Uh, now, what I'll do, I think that's- Can I ask some questions? Lou, sorry, Greg? Can I ask some questions? Sure, go for your life. Uh, so a couple of things, those uh, twin gen sets, are they the Fisher Pandas, the, the two um, um, 12 kilowatts? Synchronizable ones, no. Um, that was an option, but this owner, he had a previous boat which had had some gen generator issues on, and he wanted to keep everything as simple as possible. The advantage of the twin synchronizable Fisher Pandas is uh, obviously you're saving quite a bit of weight, uh, which is nice in any multi-hull. And you have one gen set that powers up and when the load increases sufficiently, the other one will automatically power up. Uh, this guy wanted something more simple without quite the electronics. Uh, he felt that that might fail. So he went for two 17 kilowatt um, gen sets, which so either one of those will power the whole boat up. And, and their own arms, yeah? And uh, he went for own arms, yeah. And then the other question, I, I, maybe you're about to cover it, the blinds on these Allegria 67s are the pleated blinds, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. These are the ocean air blinds. Um, you can, 
they're pretty much the only blinds that will fit with odd shaped windows. Um, you can see here as we pull that down, okay, when you have these forward facing angles and things with curtains, it becomes a nightmare. These are a really nice, simple system and uh, you can get various, um, you know, sun transfer degrees and things like that as well. Um, Very good. Yeah. Questions for uh, Saloon, Greg? No, no, I think uh, you, you're covering it very well, but I might just use this opportunity to ask anyone that is uh, watching today's webinar, if you've got questions, please feel free to ask. Just type it in the Q&A box, we will answer. Uh, but so far, I think you're doing a wonderful job. Andrew, uh, obviously that's also then got the standard Fontaine Bajot curtains across the main uh, doorway there. Yes, that's correct. Um, of course, you know, for privacy, you can cover all of that up. Uh, here in the tropics, people tend to leave things as open as they can, keep air going through unless you're air conditioned. Um, now, I'm going to walk the owner's suite on this boat. Um, I'll get Charlie to go down first so that he can just give you a quick pan around before, without being there. Before, before you go, before you go, we've got another question about the galley. Um, sure. Can we just talk about the cooktops and the oven? So on this boat, you've got gas, is that correct? Yeah, this boat's gas. Um, there's a large gas locker aft near the uh, barbecue and the cockpit, uh, and that's plumbed through to here. So yes, we have a, a gas oven here, which is a, a good sized gas oven. No problem with the bread making in there. Um, and a five burner uh, smeg uh, cooktop. So, Fontaine-Bajot at the moment are uh, using a lot of uh, SMEG equipment, which tends to be good high quality stuff and works well in these boats in salt air. And then you can, if you want to, you can go induction? Yeah, sure. Yep. You can have an induction cooktop here without a problem. Um, you need to be, depending on the, you know, the amount of cooking and things that you're doing, you need to be careful when you spec the size of the generator, of course so that if everything is electric, you may have to go up a size with the gen set, just so that it will cope with, you know, full air conditioning, water maker, cooktop and everything all on at the same time. And what's that under your left arm? Uh, you weren't listening before then, Greg. No, I wasn't. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fridge, uh, fridge uh, full of wine. It's a wine cooler. Very good. Very good, thank you. No, I know that we get asked that question all the time, Andrew, at the moment about the opportunity to have uh, the electric uh, convection uh, no, Jeff, induction. To be honest, I think the induction cooktops are a really nice idea on a boat because they do not uh, heat up the air inside the boat like the uh, like the old electric ones used to do. Um, you know, this stays and like the gas cooktop does. So an induction cooktop is really nice because it keeps everything cool on board. Very good. I think we should head for the master suite. Okay, Charlie, I'll follow you down. There you go. And while Andrew is doing that, or, and Charlie's doing that, I'll just mention too, that all the power points on this boat uh, have the USB sockets in them. So if you're running off the generator or the shore power, you've got USB charging ports. But if you're running off the battery, you've also got charging ports. I think, Andrew, there are also charging ports beside the beds. Uh, yes, that's correct, Greg. Um, Charlie's just gonna zoom around here and have a shot of the, uh, the heads in the master cabin. So that's the head arrangement in the master cabin you've got twin sinks, you've got a separate toilet. All the toilets on this boat, of course, are electric fresh water, um, nice and quiet. You've got a huge shower uh, compartment in this, uh, in this room um, with both a, uh, a handheld shower and a uh, rain shower as well. Really nice area. Um, and then coming further out, We've got the owner's little office area there. Um, it's a little bit hard to show you, but as Charlie comes through, you've got a nice big hanging locker here behind the main access door. 
in the head, you've got a ton of storage. Um, underneath all the benches and around the top, you've got storage. You have storage under here. Of course, here you can have a pop-up TV if you wish. Um, and then you've got uh, your king-size bed here. So this one's all made up nicely. This is the standard color scheme, by the way. Um, the Fontaine Peugeot standard colors tend to work pretty well. Um, you can add your own touches of color as you like. This boat, we fitted the Maestro carpet, okay? So you can see the carpet on the floor there, which adds a nice kind of luxurious feel to the cabin, I think. Um, then up here, we have a little lounging area, more storage again in here. We have a safe here um, and nice little, nice little seating area again loads of storage through here and as Charlie comes forward he can show you the window. Uh, this boat even though the lights are on at the moment there's just so much natural light in here with these hull ports. We've got the deck hatches covered over at the moment um, so all you're seeing in here really is the the LED lighting uh, plus the uh, the hull ports. So, uh, and and Andrew, above your head there, you've got the hatch. That also has the option of the fly screen slider or the shade slider, doesn't it? Uh, yes, all of the hatches on the Fontaine Peugeots have got a twin slider cover on the hatches. So you've got uh, a mosquito screen on one side and the, magnetically they're joined and then you can pull it across for a, uh, a cover as well. So uh, like a light cover as well. Now, um, another question, Andrew, there's a, a, an option on the uh, Allegria 67 and the Samana 59 price list, which talks about um, mechanical ventilation. Yes, um, the mechanical ventilation really is a fan forced air through the boat, through the different cabins. Uh, we tend not to use that so much here because we use a lot of air conditioning. But if you had no air conditioning on the boat, uh, having the mechanical ventilation is a really nice way of keeping the whole boat fresh. It works very well. Yeah, and, and I was talking to Eves, who's the production director at the factory, just the other night about this, and he he actually recommended uh, that no, he didn't recommend. He said most of the uh, Allegri's that are being built, people are ticking the mechanical ventilation as well as the air conditioning and. And because both serve a purpose, and that that surprised me a little bit because I know in the tropics it's all about air conditioning. Yeah, I think it depends a lot on how you're using the boat. Um, you know, any boat that's sitting still for a while in temperate climates, you know, having that mechanical ventilation is great. Um, you know, here we'd be more inclined to run the air conditioning on a dehumidifier setting, but. Uh, but you've got all the options as you want to. It depends also if you've got the heating system on the boat, so that if you wanted a heating system on the boat, you can have that. And then running the heating system and the mechanical ventilation together, it's fantastic. You know, the whole thing becomes uh, nice and toasty. But, but speaking of that, the air conditioning you've got on this vessel is reverse cycle. Yes, it is. Uh, and it works quite well. I mean, anywhere in the Mediterranean or somewhere like that, this will cope with that no problem when used in the heating cycle. Uh, if you were buying your boat for Norway or somewhere like that, I think I'd probably put the put the heaters on as well. Excellent. Now, one of the, the nice features of the owner's cabin is the access up into the forward cockpit, which I mentioned before. I'm just going to head up there and Charlie will follow me through then into the saloon and then we'll go down and see the VIP cabins uh, in the porthole. You missed your calling, Charlie. Uh -huh. Yeah, into the sunshine, isn't that wonderful? Lovely day, isn't it, Charlie? Look at that. Brilliant. Makes you want to be up in Pangar Bay, I'll tell you. It's beautiful. <laughs> should, should be throwing the lines off and starting the engines. Um, okay, so chaise lounge galley, and then we go down here into two VIP cabins. And as Charlie comes down, I'll just, it's a little bit hard to show you, but 
down here uh, forward is the uh, the fridge. You just turn the lights off, Charlie. Yeah. They're flashing a bit. So. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. good. So this boat has um, four VIP cabins, effectively. Um, you have three on this side and one in the other hull, uh, accessible from the cockpit. All of them have queen size beds, quite a lot of storage, fully air conditioned, of course, and are all en suite. And if you wish, you can have pop up TVs and all those sort of things as well. So this is pretty much standard for all of them. We'll show you a couple of little differences, but um, this, is, uh, this is a good idea. So I'm gonna leave you, and then Charlie is gonna come around and show you the ensuite here, um, and I'll show you, I'll see you in the front. Yeah, good. Yeah, nice big windows in here as well. There you go. Super comfortable bed. I'll get you to hold there for a minute, Charlie, and we'll just sort of yeah. take all that in. That's, that's pretty good. Nice places to stick your books, or if you want to charge your phone, there's little spots in here for you. And then the ensuite. A nice separate shower with the door so you don't spray everywhere. And uh, good mirror again in storage, all behind electric toilet. And again, somewhere to put all your toilet rolls. But um, yeah, you can swing a decent sized cat in there. It's very nice cat. too. Um, it's, a, it's a credit to the owner and the crew of this yacht, the way they presented it today, Charlie. Yeah, no, they've done a great job. Well, we're going to catch up with Andrew in the, the Ford VIP suite here. And on the way through, we we'll just look at this nice domestic Bosch fridge here. So very easy to replace if you need to at any point. And the Ford VIP. Pretty much the same again. Another en suite here, uh, queen size bed. You can see air conditioning controls. I think Charlie pointed out the phone charger sockets and things by the bed. Um, and all of these, uh, all of these bunks have light switches right next to them. So that all you have to do is push the, the sleep button and everything, all the lights go off apart from the reading lights. Okay. So Charlie, I'll get you to go into that front bathroom because we never know in the future when someone's going to ask, what's the front bathroom look like? <laughs> We can do that. A slightly, slightly different layout. There's your throne and a nice storage above and obviously mirror and basin. And then a shower compartment with a multitude of shower options for you. So every guest shower has the rain shower as well? I believe it could be fitted. I need to get back to you on that one. We'll ask Andrew on the way through. There you go. And again, lovely big windows there. And uh, I know I saw a, uh, one of the cruising guys had put uh, put his plants out here. So we had a nice view. <laughs> <laughs> so you can still keep your gardening going. But just to give you a last look at the, at the cabin. Yeah, the screen's making, there's a lot. Lights making it a little bit yellow, but it's not actually that colour. So, to excuse what's in, that, what's good, of course, on the Allegri is there's lots of room to walk around the bed, isn't there? Yeah, and there's me. And, and the beds yeah. are all outward facing. And I can stand this way around, you know, across the across the boat, so I don't have to squeeze through. So a lot of space. Well, let's head back upstairs. So Andrew, while Charlie's walking upstairs, just can you confirm I noticed in the guest bathroom there uh, that there was the rain shower. So uh, is there a rain shower in every bathroom? Uh, yes. Yeah, very good. Well, the plan now really was to wander outside and I'll show you the two aft cabins and then we can look at some technical areas as well. One thing while we're just going through the saloon here is the amount of storage uh, under the floor. There's quite a bit of storage space here, and I think so. Areas like this, uh, 
uh, we have lift up panels. Okay, so you can see how deep that is. And we have one, two, three, four areas in the saloon here. I won't open them all for you because they're all pretty much the same. But you have another one here, another one here, and another one over this side. So you've got a lot of storage in this galley, okay? This guy's lost some storage because he's put some extra fridge space in, but uh, you know, overall, it, it's not hard to uh, not hard to store what you need. Come on out. And, and where, where's your garbage again? Sorry. Garbage. Where's your Where's your garbage? Excellent. Okay. okay. And you can replace the bag under here. Under this panel here, you have life raft storage. Okay. And what we'll do, um, okay. uh, I'll show you a double cabin here, which is one of the aft cabins. This one is aft of the owner's suite. So, again, Queen size bed, lots of storage, nice ensuite bathroom. Um, one of the big advantages to me, anyway, of an owner's cabin forward is that any engine noise he won't hear. So, with this, you know, you'll still hear some engine noise, which is normal, it's pretty muted. But if you really want a, the owner to have a completely quiet evening, Put the owner's cabin forward. It's a lot quieter up there. And then we'll go to the other cabin. And on the port side, we have a similar cabin, which on this boat is actually a twin cabin. So you can see this one has the two bunks here and you can have a double bed if you wish, but we went for the twin bunks or this owner selected the twin bunks, which if you have a galley down in this whole version, you can also put the door through here. So it this then becomes a really nice crew cabin uh, with immediate access to galley and cockpit. Okay, en suite, same as everything. You know, currently you can use it as a VIP, as a guest cabin without a problem. Certainly not too shabby. I wouldn't mind sleeping in here, um, especially with these lovely fitted sheets. And, and oh, Andrew, Andrew, um, the wonderful thing about the Allegra 67 is that all of these cabins, the bathrooms and so on, if you have four or five sets of guests on board they're all going to feel that they're equally getting a a, a, a quality uh accommodation yeah absolutely i think um any there's you know tiny differences between the cabins but really apart from the access either being from the cockpit or the interior that really is the only difference. And I suppose uh, the only other difference is the two forward cabins on the port side where you are now have the outward facing uh, bunk uh, beds with the, the they window. Do, they, but, uh, there's a little bit more natural light in those cabins. That's certainly the case uh, because you just can't do it in these aft cabins. But certainly as far as facilities and, you know, heads and beds and things like that, that there's very little difference between them. Okay, now, Greg, what I was going to do is show you an engine room. Um, do you have any questions while we're while we're finishing off the, uh, you know, the accommodation and the interior? No, I'll think about it. There has been a couple of questions from viewers, so we'll have a look at those. But uh, for now, I think you've, you're doing a terrific, terrific job, gentlemen. But I, I think it's always exciting to get down into the technical space on these yachts and uh, get a, an understanding of what, what we uh, what we have. Okay, so I'll get Charlie to just stay up there, and because uh, it might be a little bit hard for him to be down here and show everything. But this is a port engine room. We 
we have the Volvo Penta 150 horsepower, the D3 150. Uh, standard on these boats is um, the 110s. So this owner has upgraded to the 150, which uh, is a relatively inexpensive upgrade and is definitely worthwhile, I believe. Um, there's the water pump, fresh water pump for the boat. Then over on the inboard side, you have your twin chillers for the air conditioning system and also your hydraulics for the uh, swim platform. Then if Charles, you can probably see out, let me go this way. Uh, over this side, we have the big water maker fitted. Okay, so uh, this is an HRO water maker. Uh, this is uh, the FP option. Uh, there are others we can get should you wish. And then if Charlie can just swing around aft, you can see the second generator or the first generator. It doesn't really matter. Um, they're both the same on each side, but you can see that the amount of space back here in front of the rudder is, uh, is huge. So the other engine room on the starboard hull has got a dive compressor and a lot of the 220 volt wiring in there. Um, but you can see even in here, there's so much room for, for uh, additions if you want. And this is the way the engine cover works. So currently that's up, allowing access on both sides of the engine. And this down. Down there. And there's a uh, thick blanket that fits over this side to make this a very, very quiet engine room when it's running. Andy, we have time. So if you've got time, it would be great to also have a look in the other engine room. Sorry, say again, Greg? The other engine room, we're going to check uh, we that have, out. We have time. So if you'd like to look in the other engine room, that would be great. No problem, come with me. So here we've got the rib up in its top level. So lots of area here. We'll check Andrew out as he disappears again. Okay, so here we are in the starboard engine room. Similar engine, obviously, same system here. Here we have the 220 volt uh, breakers. So this has got all your air conditioning systems, um, your outlets inside. And if you had um, the, <clears throat> the induction cooktop, etc., all the breakers for that would be in here as well. We've also got um, inverter for the fridge. We've got the solar power controller. We have the electronics for the autopilot and we have the other own and gen set. So Andrew, and can you hear me? Yes, I can. So let's have the chat we have to have. Let's talk a little bit about solar and let's just talk a little bit about lithium. Sure. Because as you know, these are topics that are fairly heavily discussed by potential buyers. So, so on this yacht, can you remember or recall what uh, amount of solar you have up on the hardtop? Um, this boat will have um, 500 watts, I believe. Um, this is the standard uh, Fontaine Peugeot uh, system. Uh, this owner, obviously, when he's using the boat, it's a lot of uh, generator on, air conditioning and things like that, uh, given where he's operating the boat. Uh, the solar panel's really just there as a, as a backup and a top up, but uh, you can have extra solar panels fitted. We quite often do that with all sorts of people. Um, you know, it's not unheard of to get a couple of thousand watts of solar added to a boat. And this boat's got enough uh, enough square meterage up there to be able to put quite a lot in. Yeah, and, and just while you're on that note, I, I'd like to add that uh, people would know that just recently the new 51 was announced. On the new 51, the Fontaine Bajot factory have gone for a tremendous uh, amount of solar. And we have asked the question, and that the similar amount of solar could be fitted on the Allegra as to what they've now announced for the 51 using the integrated solar uh, panels. And then the other question we are, get asked a lot of course is about uh, lithium. 
Uh, the answer about lithium at this stage is that yes, it can be fitted. It's not a factory option, but it would be fitted by Fontaine Peugeot services. And uh, we, we are able to talk to customers about that and give them some specs. Yeah, certainly. The lithium packages are not a standard option from FP at the moment, but uh, certainly we can fit whatever's required. That's no problem at all. And there's, you know, there's a, <coughs> certainly they're expensive, but there's a big weight saving there, um, which translates to, you know, fuel and sailing performance and things like that. Um, I don't believe FP at the moment are adding any more solar panels than what's on this boat. But as we do with subcontractors uh, in the past, we can add you know, whatever brand, whatever amount of solar panels are required, really. Yeah, no, very good. Because uh, I, I, we can't hide from these uh, discussions because more and more people are asking those questions. No, I mean, uh, you know, the Yannick and his uh, Fontaine Peugeot services now are doing a fantastic job, I think, because especially on these bigger boats, um, there's always things that people want to change or add or have something a little bit different. And now having an avenue to be able to do that through the shipyard is, is really, really good. And a, a very good example of that are these cockpit cushions. Um, the owner of this boat, when he saw a previous model, which decided him to buy an Allegria, wasn't 100% happy with the cushions. Thought they looked a little bit uh, a little bit inexpensive, not really up to the standards. So what, what we did is we upgraded the cushions. Now, these are more pleated. They're using uh, a dual density uh, closed cell foam. And overall, it just, it really does lift the, uh, the whole package on the boat. We've got all of the throw cushions and things, and these are all part of the, uh, part of this system, which is not part of the option when you buy the standard uh, standard cushions on the boat. And I think for memory, the option was an extra 12,000 euros, something like that. But really money well spent because it does change the, uh, the impression when you walk on the boat. And just to clarify there for anyone that's watching the, the uh, we've mentioned a few times Fontaine Peugeot services. This is the service that has been set up by the factory uh, so that once the yacht uh, has come off the production line, uh, customers can work with that department of Fontaine Peugeot to add options. And if you'd like to know more about that in terms of what they can do, we have a presentation that we can share with you through, via a Dropbox link, and we're happy to do that. So just make contact. Greg, are you okay if we just wait for a minute? Yeah. Just needed to uh, restart the air conditioning. <clears throat> oh, um, you've also got a battery isolator up there, haven't you, under that helm state, uh, under that nav area? We certainly do. <laughs> yeah. And I, it is now. It's uh, under there, it turns off the main batteries. As I mentioned before, the main battery bank, which I can't show you now because it means lifting up some of the floor, is under the nav station uh, floor here. Um, and that's controlled by a master switch just on the side of the nav table. Uh, well, very good. So, gentlemen, I, I believe you've just about shown us the entire boat, but there is one thing I'd like you to do for us. I know you're going to go, oh. Um, it, it's very impressive if you could go and walk up to the up the port side of the yacht along the dock, just to give people an impression of the freeboard and the, the, the height of the holds. Um, and, and also to step back slightly from the yacht, Charlie, and, and scan up just to give us another look at the rig profile. And then I think we'll pop back inside and uh, bring the day to a close. For sure. So we haven't presented this side, but- no, That's um, okay, it's okay. You know, I mean, I'm not tall, but uh, it's a big boat. Um, you know, you've got well over six foot of freeboard there from the top, um, which is why you get that uh, V 
feeling inside the cabin, you know, with really good head height and things like that. It's not all useful space, but it really does give you a great sense of roominess and, uh, and space on board. It also means that you've got a huge amount of space in the bilges on these holes. So we didn't show you the bilge on the holes, but uh, you've probably got a meter under the cabin sole, which you can use for storage. Can you wander up to the bow, please, Charlie? Sure. This is very impressive. I think when you're on board the Allegria 67, it just doesn't quite demonstrate until you're off the, the, the yacht like this, walking on the dock, just what a what a impressive boat they are. Well, stand over there, Andrew. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, very well. good. It's the end, and here's one of those little birds that likes to leave a mark on your boat. And don't trip over, Charlie. <laughs> Why not to? <laughs> yeah, that's a very impressive looking front. Yeah, no, that's great. I, th I think all of this is good. And, and you know, really good, really good uh, bridge deck clearance. You can get an idea of over there too. Yes. And you can see the amount of freeboard we've got even on the the anti fouling, which is standard. So. She's in pretty light trim at the moment. So you could certainly add lots more to it if you wanted to. And there again, a bit of a sun shot. Is that the standard rig, Andrew? Yeah, yes. So a great looking boat. Yeah. Thank you. So Andrew, if you're there, if you might want to come back into camera shot or is he gone? No, he's still here. Yeah. still here. So rather than uh, force you to walk all the way back, I think we've done really well. And I, I think you've shown us a, uh, probably the best walkthrough I've seen so far of the Allegria with uh, a, a demonstration of the, the whole vessel. It hasn't been rushed. Uh, we don't have any other questions. Uh, Rachel, I think you're, uh, you, you're happy that we've covered everything. Um, so on behalf of all of us at Multi Hole Solutions, Thank you, gentlemen. You've you've done a really good um, a really good walkthrough of the Allegria 67, and we uh, welcome any inquiries or questions, whether it be to the gents up there in Phuket or us here in Australia or to Fontaine Joe directly. But, um, well done, gents, and uh, thank you for a great uh, presentation. And we'll we'll leave you there to uh, go and crack a cold one. Thank you. Cheers.